Hello and a happy New Year's, everyone. And it is New Year's Day, or you'll be seeing this video on the second day of the New Year. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. And because it was New Year's Day, even though I had to work, again, had a nice little refreshing beverage for a change. It is a special day. There's going to be a special episode following this. You're going to want to make a very good New Year's Day feast. I'll get to that at the end of the video, but for right now, let's talk about some pro wrestling. This is actually... These next two weeks are going to be chock full of pro wrestling. Assuming I get off one day next week. Now I'm going to talk about SmackDown. So this video will probably be up Wednesday. I'm just a little bit behind. It's having some technical issues and glitches with my equipment, which isn't saying much. And then Thursday is going to be my predictions for New Japan, Wrestle Kingdom. I think I'm going to do a live stream for Wrestle Kingdom. And maybe New Year's Death. That comes on Saturday night, Sunday morning ish, or Friday morning ish. I have to figure out, I have to get time zones and, and stuff straightened out. And hopefully you will see this guy, Hobo Tom, at Orlando on Monday, January 7th, for a live showing of Raw. And I promise you'll get some live footage, folks. Let's see what Raw is all about. That includes their the ever-elusive dark matches. Ooh. One of the best matches. And then it's going to be the normal SmackDown. And I have to see what free shows of Impact Wrestling can get. So there's no other video, so let's talk about SmackDown. And this was a weird SmackDown. It was not as good as previous SmackDowns, but that's not saying much, though. I mean, a good SmackDown in the past has been better than Great Raw's. As a whole, so this don't get me wrong. This was a fun show. It just, I think it just had a lot of rehashing, and I'm just not a big John Cena fan. It's just me. I can still remember when he came into the WWE as the professor of thugonomics and that weird. Vanilla ice snow white wrapper combo. That and you can still hear his spots. I bet you Zelina Vega could hear his spots. I'll talk about that later. Well, let's get things started. So we have the New Day come out. Um, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods look a little bit more dressed up. Big E is the big New Year's baby. <laughs> Again, Kofi Kingston. Oh, Kofi Kingston. There's only one person that can ever use the term baby. We all know who that is, folks. That is Adam Cole, baby! Kofi Kingston, even though he says baby. 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 Baby, for Adam, wait, Adam Cole, baby, bang, there we go, hit all the spots, um, again, he's the only, Adam Cole, baby, is the only baby ever, um, he did reference Stoddard math, which we all know how that goes, <laughs> that was just funny, though. 
And they declared themselves to be in the Royal Rumble. So the Royal Rumble, I want to say, is the 20th. I will be live streaming, I hope. At least most of it I'll be live streaming. Hope to get off that day, maybe. Or at least work early. Then we can watch the pre-show and do my hobo ways and live stream everything. I can live stream again. Yes. Again, ladies, if you would like to sit in this chair or even the couch, and well, here's the chair. You probably can barely see it. The couch, well, it's over there. Then you can hit this guy up on the email at hobogirlfriend at gmail.com, and you could be that new girlfriend. But that's enough about that. Enough self motion. So the first match, again, it's Samoa Joe versus Jeff Hardy. Joe works so stiff looking. Joe's good. I mean, he's stiff looking. When did he use a knee bar? That's good. That that means they're trying different. Which is good because if you're gonna have rematches all the time, you better at least be doing something different or else it's going to get boring it's going to be like Ugh. again Jeff Hardy is still an amazing chain wrestler um, the one thing they tried to emphasize in this match is about count outs because for a while they were fighting on the outside and it got really close to the 10 count and oh actually Samoa Joe had Jeff Hardy and the Coquina Clutch on the outside. And this was smart. Hey, if I can pass him out outside, I can just relax in the ring. The ref counts to 10. And I win the match. And I'm added into the Fatal Five Way. And when did they start that? Or did I really miss something last week? Because I don't remember about hearing about this. Until this particular show. So, but again, I'll talk about that a little bit later. And I'm just not keen into surprises. I know the one good thing Lucha Underground always did is that they always kind of had a predilection to what the next show is going to be about. Or at least what the main event was. So, WWE, uh, not so much. But again, it's a whole, the two whole different philosophies of pro wrestling. Um, again, just a, just a good chain wrestler. So actually, to get back to my point, uh, Samoa Joe is going for the count of victory versus Jeff Hardy. Again, Jeff Hardy is hitting all spots at the Swanton. Joe rolled out. And, uh, Jeff followed for a while. J they were both trying to go after each other's legs. Um. Joe did try to win because he had the coquina clutch on Jeff. And he got in before he got in, I think, at the count of seven. But then kind of broke the referee's count. I think he did that in the ref's face. I think. I'm not sure. too sure. And even Corey Graves says he wasn't too sure why the ref started for one. So, the, so Jeff Hardy had the whole time to recover. And getting back in the ring, of course, at the nine. Oh, he's back in. Continue. And, of course, Samoa Joe, he was smart, though. This is what I like about SmackDown is that they wrestle like it's... And it's supposed to be more of based on competition, which is really good. And it shows that he's smart. He's like, you know what? He's half out of it anyway. I'll put him in the coquina clutch again. and. Jeff Hardy passed out. He didn't tap out, which is good. So it keeps Jeff Hardy looking strong, and it makes Samoa Joe look great. So Samoa Joe goes on, and it's going to be part of the Fatal Five Way. This was a good match. We've seen so much of it, though. It's a cheeseburger match.
Then you have Vince and Shane kind of just relaxing backstage in the office area. AJ Styles comes in. He's all fired up. Vince likes that. And Shane likes it, too. That was good. Um, I, again, I just don't know when they announced. Oh, there was some good chance. Um, when New Day comes out, the crowd always chants, we want pancakes. And, of course, with, with Jeff Hardy, it's all about delete, delete, delete. I think they forgot obsolete. I hope Matt Hardy's doing well. He was the more charismatic of the two, I think. But that's neither here nor there. Rusev comes out. Not only is it New Year's Day, but it's Rusev Day! Uh, he comes out. He tells how he's going to be a fighting champ. Um, he has some interactions with his wife, Lana. I think he said he, he was like a bear in bed after he won that. Right to Lana. And you can tell Lana really kind of pursed her lips together. She was, she was almost turning red. And she was about to burst out laughing. That's great. That's the power of Rusev Day. And then Shinsuke and Nakamura come out. Uh, just need Rusev in the back. Lana, I'll give her her credit. She jumped on Shinsuke Nakamura. Not the smartest thing to do. And, oh, by the way, even less smart when you're wearing a short little mini red dress with black panties. I saw that. The TV audience saw that. Everyone saw that. You know what picture that's going to get. That's going to get a thank you Lana picture. Um, eventually Rusev did try to save his wife. Unfortunately, he Mashka kicked Lana and was beside himself, like on his knees, like, Oh, what did I do? And then of course it gets Kinshasa for his efforts. So hopefully that's a feud that continues. Maybe we'll see that rematch for the Royal Rumble. I know they're not supposed to have rematches as long as it's not the next day or as long as it's at like like within like the 30 days or at least to the next pay-per-view i'm good with that this led to our next match which was or actually it came out to be a promo of john cena john cena is getting a little chatty he's still good at delivering promos he sings like a butterfly and floats like a bumblebee Oh, people are supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot that. Um, eventually, Evil Becky comes out. She just gets cheered. Evil Becky is so cool. Even she brought up Nikki Bella. <laughs> oh, that was a good zinger. Nikki, oh, Evil Becky. Wait. Evil Becky, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And then Zelina Vega came out. And she had on some like weird like toddler's tiara. Like fake tiara for New Year's. And she's tiny. I mean, just small all around. She's short. You can tell. Like, she's, like, standing in behind Andrade Almas and still, like, shorter than he is. So this led to a match. Um, eventually, of course, John Cena said, you know, just come down here and let's go. And Becky's like, eh, eh. I want Selena Vega. And he's like, well, why don't we make this a tag team match? Holla, holla, holla. It's a tag team. 
tossed together tag team match. And so it was um, John Cena and Becky Lynch versus Andrade Cien Almas and Selena Vega. Becky wants in first. She starts taking Selena Vega. Selena Vega, I think, was just there to eat that eat, eat the loss. Because Selena Vega eventually did tap did tag Almas. Becky Lynch is like, uh uh-uh. uh. Bring it. Until of course the referee said, No, Becky, you can't fight Almas. And and you, John Cena, just get over here. Get in the ring. Um, it was a pretty good back and forth with between Cena and Almas. He couldn't hear any, couldn't hear the spots. Thankfully, I think it's up for once. There's something about really wrenching. Again, Almas being coming from New Japan knows how to apply rest holds, like a headlock. He really puts a little bit of extra muster on that headlock, which is good. It makes it believable. It's not, you're not going to tap out from it, but darn, you're going to be uncomfortable. I mean, you have your neck wrench. It's going to cut off the blood supply to the head. It's just not a fun thing to be in. So it was good in that sense. But again, John Cena, when he can hit the spots, it's like, yeah. And when John Cena put the headlock in, you can see. Yes, him. Oh, new mic. All right. Look at that. To the US. But I mean, you could really tell. So that's okay. Uh, Vega did get a shot. Her shots on Cena. Um, tried to like choke him and stretch him and just kicked him once. There was the five moves of doom. Shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, backdrop. You can't see me. AA on Vega. On, I'm sorry, on, on Andrade Almas. Um, the people chant for Becky. Becky gets, gets in, puts Selena Vega in the disarmor. Or actually, Selena Vega tried, was in the disarmor the first time. Andrade pulled her out. John Cena came in, five moves of doom. Vega got back in, disarm her. And that's that's kind of the way it went. Once the disarmer was in, you knew Zelina Vega was eating eating the loss. But you know what? Can't see Becky Lynch. Oh! That was great. The crowd went bonkers for that. And overall, it was a fun match. It's a good cheeseburger match. Then there's, again, kind of promos for everyone in the Fatal Five Way. You have The Miz and Shane, Shane McMack talking. You have Asuka, and you have also Asuka, again, the woman's champion, and Triple H, Triple H congratulating her. What kind of outfit was Charlotte wearing? Oh, yeah. Me likey likey some Charlotte there. For Mardi Gras. Maybe Charlotte. Flair. Woo! We'll go against goody goody Heather. The bestest girlfriend belt. Especially after that outfit. How did it hide stuff up here and It was good. And then, of course, Carmella gets involved, and who cares about Carmella? And, of course, Becky Lynch showed up. So, eventually, sometime, there'll probably be a fatal four way, I guess, for the woman's belt, or it'll be a triple threat to see who faces Asuka, or, or we'll see in the next couple of weeks. Then we have the fatal five way, which was truly really amazing. You have AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe versus Randy Orton versus Mustafa Ali versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Those five superstars in the same ring 
is an amazing match. Especially now we're getting Bullet Club AJ. New Japan Bullet Club AJ is best AJ. Almost as good as he was with the club AJ. And we're going to beat up John Cena. Again, this was so good. I mean, this, this really had to be a dream for AJ Styles. I mean, he gets to wrestle against Samoa Joe again. I'm sure he, he, he's had amazing matches with in the indies. Gets to face Rey Mysterio for the most part. That has to be on his bucket list. I would, well, I would guess it would be. Again, Randy Orton, another legend he gets to face. And Mustafa Ali, who's who he's giving the biggest rub to cover. Mustafa Ali is headed for big things, I think. But it was so much fun. Every wrestler had their spots. AJ got put through a table once. Um, again, Randy Orton is just vicious Orton. Just stomps on you. I like that. Uh, Samoa Joe is Samoa Joe. Rey Mysterio hits a 619 on everyone. Mustafa Ali, he did the standing Spanish fly to Rey Mysterio Jr. Oh, so perfect. The top rope Spanish fly. Has to be up there in my top rope maneuvers. Probably next to Starship Pain. Spanish flies are just fun, especially from the top rope. That looked amazing. 05, I don't know, 054 is okay, but Starship Pain, though, that's up there. Um, Ray 619s, everyone. Ali eats an RKO. And Styles, the, one of the best things about AJ Styles, he can beat you so many ways. He's a phenomenal form, which he'll beat jobbers with. Uh, when it calls for a submission match, he has the calf crusher. He keeps the Styles Clash tucked away in his arsenal for the for the big matches. And then he hits a springboard 450. That's four ways he can beat you. What else can, can, could he possibly do? AJ Styles is amazing. He hits a, four, a springboard 450 onto Randy Orton. AJ Styles is going to face Daniel Bryan at the Royal Rumble. So there's at least one. Oh, wow. One. Just two weeks of build for that. Again, this goes all back. So this should be really good. And that was, and this, I'll, I'll tell you what, this match was amazing. This, if it wasn't five people, if it was maybe three, because you really didn't need Orton or Ali in there. You need Ali. If it was a four way, I don't know. The what whatever whatever it would have been could have would have should have. Um, this was still a good surf and turf quality match. And that was SmackDown again. It was a really good show. Um, the last match again took up for the most part the the last. Jeez, I think. 35 minutes or so. A lot of promos, a lot of setup for stuff. Not as good as past SmackDowns. No, past SmackDowns. Still a lot better than, than most Raws have been. Although the last while was, was really fun and enjoyable. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. A little bonus footage. Another view of cooking with this guy, the hobo in the hobo kitchen. This is my little thanks, my little New Year's Day feast. Cook some nice lamb and some nice side dishes. Show you how that's done so that you can impress that special person in your life. Ladies, if you are impressed by that, then send this guy an email. And you can always email me at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Hello and welcome again to the Hobo's Kitchen as we follow the Hobo Cat into the Hobo Kitchen. My name is Hobo Tom and I'd like to wish everyone again a happy, well now it's, it's actually January 2nd because it's past midnight 
And I had to work today. I had to work late, had to close, so I'm kind of cooking dinner a little bit late. I'm kind of waiting for my computer to upload, so this is going to be kind of weird. This will probably be going up Wednesday, along with my SmackDown review. Then don't forget, on Thursday is going to be my predictions for New Japan, which I think I'm going to cover. So a couple things. I'm going to have my New Year's Day feast. So right now, in the pot, I have some macaroni boiling and I have fancy macaroni and cheese. And I think that's actually almost done. I have to use oil. Um, eventually, I'm going to cook some black-eyed peas, some stuffing. And in the oven, I have some potatoes going already. Whoa, feel that steam. So the next thing to do, I'm going to let that kind of boil a little bit more. Make sure I guess, and I think one of the main reasons I'm going to let it boil a little bit more is that I want to get some of the water out. And if we go out here, go out to the grill, as, as always, when there's ever a feast, let's see, let's turn the light on so I can see something outside. See, see how many critters there are outside. I think there's all kinds of raccoons and other denzines living out there. And you probably can't see anything because the light level is really pathetic. And this is a good camera. Well, it's an okay camera. But really what I use it for is for fishing and for wrestling. Out here in the beautiful wilds, Daytona Beach. Can't see anything. Get the old grill cover off. Let's see. What I still have, yes, I still have my little fire, my little kindling stick. Like that. I have to pop the grill on because, again, I always like to sterilize the grill because I don't clean it that often. So I just let the heat kill everything. This warm up for about five or ten minutes. So the gas should be on. Bad boy lights right up, look at that. And what I do, because I think my night is getting ancient. I have a little kindling stick. Probably can't see much of it. But you'll, you'll see a lot of it now though. Dry off a little bit. Stick that in here. Whoosh, whoosh. And then just go down the top. The lamb's a little bit tricky to cook, so I'm going to do a little bit of a combo style cooking. I'm going to first grill it, fry for about 10 minutes, but I do want this to get up to temperature. I know you can't see that. But I want it to get up there probably about oh, 500 or so before I put the lamb steak on, itself on. And I'll show you all about the preparation of that. And we're heading back to the kitchen. Hello! Who's that? You probably can't see us. My cat, she always likes to go outside chase lizards. It's like she brought a feather in the house. I don't know what's up with cats and bringing stuff in the house to play with it. So let's go back here, I'm back in the kitchen part. So the pasta's probably almost done. Yeah, because that's only a little bit of water left, so that's actually pretty good. I think because I'm actually using a liquid thing, potatoes I know still have a while to cook. And the nice thing about cooking on a stove and oven is that things stay hot a lot longer. There's very more, much more consistent heat. Unlike the microwave, whereas it gets really hot and then it cools off really quick. So I'm going to turn my next burner on. I like to set it at 7. I don't think I've ever gone higher than 8 on an electric stove. I think when I was in Michigan we had gas, and in New York we had, I had gas. That was really fun to cook with the gas. Again, beans always want to drain a little bit of the juice off. Too much, and let's see here. Um, gonna... The other thing I like to do is I'm lazy. Had these little plastic forks forever, little appetizer forks. I have to use that. Then you need black eyed peas. Can I have the one burner going? It's all a little olive oil because I know this stuff will stick everywhere. 
just really enough to coat the pan. You don't want to fry them really, but so you don't want to fry them, but you don't want them because they will stick to the pan. You just kind of coat the pan a little bit. Don't need a lot. You actually can see a nice sheen of oil. Especially where it's a little bit darker because I don't know if I think I've scraped the non-stick stuff off this stuff anyway. Then the olive oil gives a little taste. Again, beans go in. And again, I like to do this preferably in the microwave. I know my mom likes to microwave beans. To me, they get too cold too quick. And that's sometimes problematic. Because of oh, oil is okay. And I like things a little spicy. Use some hot sauce. Oh yeah. Not to go wrong with hot sauce. And again I always like a little red chili flake. And I have my candle going because it is the new year. Push that off a little bit to the side so you can get a better view. I don't want my ceramics to catch on fire. Right now my... You can probably see it a little bit better there. Kind of drained off almost all of my noodles. And what I do... I have the beans going. Actually, I'm going to put a lid on the beans. Those cook a little bit quicker. Can you keep that heat in? It's science, baby! We can have things going quicker. Um, what I like to do... Is, again, I'll take a lid. Now let's see, I think I have to restart this in 30 seconds. So you know what, I'll restart. So again, I'll take my lid, come over here by the old sink. Again, those are some of the dishes. I'm going to lower the heat also to about six. And only because it does take a while, don't have to get all the water out, but if you get a good chunk of it out, This is a key part because even though you have that olive oil in, put that on that side because it's still fairly clean. You don't want to see me because I'm kind of barely dressed. Open up the cheese packet. Mmm, cheese is good, folks. And you have to do this kind of expeditiously because you can hear that it's actually cooking the noodles onto the bottom of the pan. That's why. Ooh, that was pretty cool. Because there is still some water in there. Some nice blocks of white cheddar. And this is the key. So there's a little you know. I just have a nice little fashioned stirring spoon. You don't necessarily want it on the heat, but you want it near the heat. So you can stir it up because that's going to help melt the cheese. I know you couldn't see it beforehand. See how quickly it melts though? Steam catching up. So it's one of those things you have to constantly kind of work in. You don't have to steam because it's still going to be fairly liquidy. There is some liquid in there. And what you're going to do, you're going to let this reduce. For a little bit, that cheese, that cheese sauce is in there. As long as every so often you kind of keep on stirring it, that's pretty good. So next, I'm going to have, going to have my corn, going to have my cornbread stuffing mix. And very simply, it really doesn't matter. Um, again, it's, it's so basic. They give you the instructions. Again, on the stove top. Again, I like to do it on the stove top, mainly because I'm going to put you here. Mainly because it's going to stay a lot warmer. And I don't like to use hot water because I don't want it to be overcooked. But I like to use kind of really warm water. And notice I'm cooking all this stuff first because again, this is going to retain heat. 
and then always keep on stirring the macaronis or else they're going or will cook to the bottom of the pan even though you did lower the heat. And you'll always know it's done because it's going to be nice and viscous at the bottom. I have this going. This is just need a cup and a half warm water. Kind of this pot. And stuffing cooks up really quickly. I'm going to turn that on to about six or seven. I don't know if you saw what I did there. So right now, again, I keep on stirring this. Beans are cooking, they can just kind of boil away, that's okay. That's going in a nice pot of water there. And try and be consistent on using the same knife to kind of open up everything and make them lazy. Oh, with this, then you also want to add in And I really do this for flavor. I do like the olive oil. A little splash of olive oil. And keep on stirring the macaroni and cheese until it really reduces really good. We need a little butter. I like to use margarine. I'm not a big fan of using butter. Um, I'll use about half the amount and margarine and probably a good splash of olive oil and it really doesn't matter yeah, and I'm just going to stand over here I'm going to kind of break all that up you can do this whatever way you want I just do this because margarine does take a little bit longer to break up in water you want that water warm up see things steaming which is always a good sign And I'll show you what macaroni and cheese is supposed to look like once it gets cooked. So what I'm going to do quickly because I am going to go outside. I'm going to get things ready. So I have that spoon. That. Yeah, I have like to give everything a little stir because again, even though I did put some olive oil in it, it's going to settle down. That's steamy. So I actually want that. Yeah, I want all that liquid to reduce. That's the stuff that, that gives you gas, is, is bean liquid. So again, I want that to reduce. That gives me spoon rest. There, that's going. Potatoes looking nice and good. The potatoes are probably almost done. Now it's time to get the lamb out. Yes. And so we have some nice lamb here. And I'm going to grill it with green onions on top. So let's see, do I need a knife for this? No, because I can rip it off there. So again, when you're not, unless you really know what you're doing, we set things either a lot lower or off. The beans will be fine. There's, there's still a lot of liquid in there. I have my beautiful lamb steak. It's already somewhat seasoned. As we go back to the outside. And remember, we spent probably a good eight minutes inside and I have three burgers going. So that grill should be nice and hot now. You probably can't see this, but it's actually almost 500, it's about 475. So here, I'm going to do, hopefully I don't get this on my camera, and don't drop everything all over the place. Thank goodness they're veggies and they're still in their bag, for the most part. Um, let's see here. You want to open this up. It's supposed to have a quick little tab. Let's see here. I'll be right back, folks, and I'll sh So what I had to do, I had to go and get my knife. And I think you, you should be able to see. I kind of have my tools and stuff. So again, it's a nice hot flame. I think they really sealed this up really good. And again, you can get lamb kind of really at any grocer's market. It's all up to you. I use wet hand, dry hand method of getting, oh wow, that would smell so good. And I'm going to cook the thing whole and then I'll slice it up eventually. 
Um, it's been marinating, so this, because I'm actually going to throw that off, put some time, put that actually on top, because I'm on the, on the bottom, so it kind of smokes a little bit more. Oh, you can already hear that sizzle. And again, what I'm going to do very simply, because I do enjoy my green onions. They're veggie, so you can toss any of the bad ones, because I've had these for like a few days now. I'm just going to kind of rip off some of the things, so that I can get the free snack. And I want to smoke a little bit, so I want these to catch on fire. So again, I'm going to close the lid, but I also put a couple sprigs on top, and oh my god, that smells so good. And then with this, you're just going for the taste and the flavor. So you don't necessarily need, because you're not, you might have some of it roasted. But it's going to be kind of tough to do that. I'm just kind of taking like the bad parts off. You can see the parts are catching on fire. Oh, it smells so good though. Okay, so that's all set up. Let that cook. Smoke probably for a good 10 minutes. Probably 15 minutes because it is a fairly thick piece. It's not big. So I don't know where it got cut out. Um, so here you can see how nicely reduced it is. And the beans are kind of reducing again pretty good. Once you can start to see the bottom of the pan, anything, then you want to lower the heat just a little bit. And I know stuffing takes like no time to cook. So I think my potatoes are done. They're boiling a little bit. Ooh, that's a good blast of heat coming out. So again, I have the stuffing pot ready for the stuffing. And the key of stuffing is that all that bread actually soaks up that water. And the true key to stuffing is that you always want to use a fork. Oops, wrong way. There we go. You just want to fluff with a <laughs> you want to fluff it with a fork. And a nice fork here. And it kind of goes kind of around that sop up all that liquid. So you have a hot water base. It's gonna sop up, it's still gonna steam. It's also going to both cook the bread. Again, it's one of those things that's going to sop up all that li liquidy juice. So it's going to take, take the flavor of the olive oil, the butter, butter, everything. That's going to cook in the pan. And because you use the olive oil and margarine, I'm not going to stick to the pan as much. So now I think you, I want to say my macaroni and cheese is done. Because, again, I kind of let it go a little bit too much. Because it's starting to stick to the bottom of that. And because you can clearly see here, you can't see any more liquid. So that means this burner goes off. And I'm just going to let it sit there for just a little bit, kind of keep on stirring it. that fluff up again see how nice and moist that stuffing looks because if you screw up cornbread stuffing in the south they will like tar and feather you or something and you can tell because you can stick a you can as you're moving it with a fork you can actually tell when it's nice and kind of fluffy feeling because it's not you're not going to hit any like grains of sand like see right there that was kind of a little tough, so again, you spread out, get that moisture out. I'm going to let that cook probably just really a few more minutes. Stuffing is really the hardest thing to screw up between stuffing and instant potatoes. The beans are actually really all done. You can tell there's very little juice left in these beans. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to start, so I'm trying to keep a little bit of an eye on the clock. I'm going to turn that off, let these just kind of steam up a 
little bit more. So I'm going to put the lid back on. Again, keep all that heat in. In there. And the same thing with the mac and cheese. I'm going to give it one last stir. Again, you want to have kind of nice, fresh, hot food. Oh, that looks good. Because you can see where all that stuff was sitting. You can see all that macaroni and cheese sauce on it. Yum. I'm going to turn that off. And I'll let that sit on the, on the pot there a little while because I don't have a lid for that. Again, the same thing with the stuffing. And so that's off. My potatoes are actually done. You can tell. Whoa, look at that steam come up, baby. Tell because they're actually just be barely, barely being the brown. So I'm going to turn that off. And then I'll sit in the oven. Still a couple more minutes. I'm going to go take a look at that lamb. Do that if they get... Shoot. So I'll be right back, folks. Okay, so right now, everything... Ooh, I have to start deleting some of these videos. That was six more minutes left. And I, have to, I might have to get a new memory card, too. Shoot. Mom, oh, wait, I have that $50 gift card. No, that's not too bad. Oh, I need a Target, too. What am I thinking of? So out here, wow, it got chilly all of a sudden. It's so hot. Let's see here. Let's see how this steak's looking. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's just looking so delicious. Again, I know you can't smell it, but again, I like to flip it over. See those grill marks? It's so good looking. I'm going to flip it right over on the onions. We've got probably about five more minutes. I like this over the heat, kind of semi indirectly. I'll come back for the lamb steak. Hello! And then I'll show you how to prep everything. So I have a couple more things to do. I think it's only about five more minutes left on that steak. And it'll be all good to go. So I'll be back. Okay, so I'm heading out to get the lamb because it should be nice and done now. Again, I know people say you want it rare. I'm not a big fan of rare meat. If it's just a little pink, really in the middle, I can live with it. So I'm going to put the cutting board down. And this is the most important thing. A lot of people, I don't think, understand this. But to me, it always tastes different if you use a resin or a plastic board. I have to turn that off first and all the little other knobs done. Because for some reason, that plastic stuff gives, it, gives every meat I've ever cooked from the weird taste. So you can see that the lamb steak's pretty well done. So I'm going to go there. I'll put the grill cover back on. But probably the most important step, besides using a wood cutting board, I'll come back and get that stuff in a little bit. You know, it doesn't matter if you just go out there and see it. But to me, the most important part, and I'll show you, is one, the setup. Two, you have to use wood with meat. Plastic's fine for veggies and stuff, but for some reason, I don't know, kills the taste. So again, when I'm, and the next most important thing, you always want to let the meat rest. So very quickly, you're going to see me in my kind of casual clothes, so I'm not making a video yet. Shoot, I'm going to be more than close. You always want to let the meat rest for at least 10 minutes. Only because this way, all those juices that are in the meat get reabsorbed. And actually, I'm going to move this over to a prepared cutting area. This is like my cutting board I think I've used geez, for years now. I have three minutes left. Just to show you a little bit of the preparation, I'm going to let that kind of sit in there. The potatoes are still stewing. And they're juices. So again, macaroni and cheese, some beans, some stuffing, place for that, place for that. And of course, the most important part, yes, you can't have a celebration without something to celebrate with. So again, 10 minutes, I'll be back. Okay, so for the last cut, this is the way lamb should really look. Lamb, again, should not be well done. It's always going to be a little bit more pink. 
But what I'm doing right now, I'm just kind of slicing and then I let that rest because you can tell there's very little blood or juice coming out of it. So again, if you let the meat rest properly, let's set this up somewhere over here. You don't want to see me. But again, you want to let the meat rest properly because again, you can see very little juice. It means all that juice, all that yummy deliciousness has been reabsorbed by this lamb. And you can tell, for lamb, this is like freaking near perfect. It's probably, because it's nice because it, around the edges, kind of brown around the edges, but it's, it has a nice cook. And again, you can always use a meat thermometer to check. You can kind of see, like with this piece right there, you can see kind of where it's been. I know some people aren't a fan of really red meat. It honestly all depends what kind of meat it is. And again, the next, probably most important thing is always the presentation. And you can kind of tell that's like near perfect. To me, this is like perfectly done lamb. You don't want it blue, because you know if it's raw, it's actually not going to be a red, it's actually going to be a weird kind of funky blue color. And lamb's not one of those things you really want to mess up either. Uh, the lamb burger, that's different. Lamb burger, you can do whatever. Again, you can tell it's cooked because it's literally falling apart. I mean, it's like butter. It's amazing stuff. And I wish you guys could really have a smell of this. So now... Here, in one minute left, we have everything plated again. This is lamb. This is the way a kind of lamb should look. So I'll show you my whole spread very quickly as I put a couple pieces of this delectable meat on top of plate. That's really not a lot either. I'm surprised that thing really shrunk. I mean, you could cook it. I mean, I wouldn't have cooked it much longer than I did. Honestly, and you can see it has really has all that juice. Again, it all all the juice absorbed into it. I know it's not the thing for some people, and I'm not going to use this fork. I have I have some better knives and forks. Yeah, and this is now. And so you have come mac and cheese, some beans, a little bit of everything, your meat, and of course you have a nice frothy beverage. There you have a sour Scottish meal, well, kind of made by Canada, right? Well, it's ginger ale. And scotch instead of bourbon with a twist of lemon in it. So it's a little bit re refreshing. It's going to cut all the fattiness of that. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And look for my my predictions for New Japan Pro Wrestling coming up. Right in a tiny day or two. Again, Happy New Year's Day, everyone. From, from the hobo and Elisa's cat who's here somewhere. I'll see everyone later. Bye. Oh, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Woohoo! Bye.